Hey everyone, back for round two in the shitty kitty kitchen. It's Sunday meal prep day. I have a beautiful um, spicy custard, sweet and spicy custard baking in the oven at the moment. We made that just before. It's got about another 25 minutes to go. And coming up now, we're going to make some muffins, savory muffins, zucchini, ricotta and tomato muffins. I've just sprayed the... Sorry, I did spray it before, but that was a while ago. I've done the dishes from the last round. I use a coconut oil spray, but any kind of oil spray just to lightly spray your muffin tin. And I'm just going to put the muffin papers back in because I pop them in before spraying. We'll be making 12 muffins. Absolutely beautiful for brunches, lunches, um, and they also freeze incredibly well too. So if you don't eat them all, pop them in your freezer and then, hey again, human animal. No, don't curb your commentary. Thanks to you, I did get in contact with my mother. Good girl. But no, I love your commentary. I'd rather someone's chatting than nobody. So bring it on, human animal. Yeah, so we've got our 12 muffin tin, my muffin cases ready to go we'll be making a dozen of them and like I was saying in the previous live I always make muffins on my meal prep week because they're just so easy like rummaging in the freezer and trying to work out something to take to work for lunch and finding a savory muffin and a lot of the ones that I make are really quite dense like lots of seeds and yummy bits and pieces in it this is a fairly light one from what I can tell because it's really just zucchini ricotta and tomato um but I often take half a dozen of them to work to to share with work colleagues and then I'll freeze like four of them as well share the stream go for it human animal so I'm not able to preheat the oven what I'm going to basically do with these is make them and have them good to go and then crank hopefully the baked custards will be out crank it up to 180 and it'll be good to go. So we'll just get on with making the muffin mix. Oh, before we do that, um, just a little tip too. Like we used a lot of eggs in the last show, five in fact. If you get your eggshells, break them up a bit with your hands and then get your pestle or your mortar whichever one it is and it's a good thing to get kids and people to do there's actually water in the bottom so I haven't done this very well but if you drain the water out and smash them up they're really good to put on top of like pot plants and your herbs and stuff out on your deck in your in your garden it's a really good little fertilizer so yeah little tip there on what to do with your eggshells that's something I will finish later I've just drained the water out. But smash them up a bit. Hey, cement shoes. Just in time to make um, some savoury muffins and also to keep Humanimal company, who was keeping me company in the last one. So we're going to get a bowl freshly cleaned from the last session, same favourite bowls back and start putting all of our ingredients. Actually, to be honest, I use the same mixing bowl every time I make my muffins. It feels weird using that bowl. I like using my mum's mixing bowl. As always in this house though, I have a lot of exposed shelves in the kitchen. Everything has to be wiped. Because a certain floof who's got the zoomies right now, convenient. Um, if I don't give everything a good wipe down, there's a good chance you'll get a bit of sunny in your food. Floof. It's like a floating condiment around here. <laughs> First up, we need two and a half cups of self-raising flour. See, look, I did the dishes, human animal, same jug as before. I knew my self-raising flour was pretty low, so I bought some more and 
tried to put it all into the tin and that was a mistake because it was a big mound on top <laughs> without being able to put the lid back down. So I had partly decanted it before we went live. But yeah, two and a half cups of self-raising flour. Now, Hume Animal might know the trick on how to make plain flour self-raising. You add some baking powder, is it? Hello, Zoomy Cat. There's my sous chef supervising from the Love Heart rug. There's Sunny Bum. Oh, yeah, um, I'm, I am actually simulcast. I'm on two channels today because it makes sense for me to cook on the Tasmania Calling because it is kind of my vlog and I want to highlight Tasmanian produce, but I also want to keep the other channel as an archive of all my cooking stuff. So you could be on the wrong channel. Well, I mean, they're both right. But if you want to catch up with people, we'll try and be in the same one. <laughs> so, yeah, two and a half cups of self-raising flour. And I'm just going to move that onto the stove top because coming up now, it's grating central. You need to grate two zucchini or as they're known in other parts of the country and world or not the country but the world courgettes i did give them a rinse i'm just going to dry them off because we want to keep i mean there's already heaps of water in zucchini we don't need to add any more just take the ends off them And I'm going to get my little compost bowl. Mind you, compost for me is off my deck and down into the garden below, but I have a lot of wildlife who appreciate offshoots and things. Add baking powder and some baking soda. Reduce salt if you use baking soda too. There you go. So you're in the same channel now. Anyway, now this is the riveting bit. If I'd had time, I would have grated before going live. Um, takes a little while. Mind you, oh, what did I make? The last savoury muffins I made were sweet potato ones. And I had to get an 800 gram sweet potato and grate the whole thing. Oh, my God, it went on and on and on and on. Sunny was looking at me because it wasn't a noise that she really liked. Hello, gorgeous. I know you want to play, but I'm on YouTube. Are you smooching the wall? Lucky wall. I've got to congratulate her every time she smooches something. It's routine. You like this channel's name better. What's that? The shitty kitty kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tiny little channel. I mean, it's basically a cooking archive. Um, but, you know, I'm not, it doesn't make sense to build another channel from scratch. So I kind of figure if I can get Tasmania calling back on the algorithm, that's my plan. I've put five years of my life into this channel. I want to be able to keep sponsoring Tasmanian rescue floofs. So I'm sort of thinking, well, I'll just go live on both because the Shitty Kitty Kitchen might attract a whole new audience too, you know. Who knows? Who knows? But just going live over there makes no sense to me. Um, so there's one, almost one grated zucchini. Just chuck that straight into the bowl. I was actually going to rename. I've got another channel that I really desperately want to do this year and I was nearly thinking of renaming the Shitty Kitty Kitchen and hiding all the cooking stuff and starting that as my new channel, but um, I've decided that it's just easier to create a fourth channel because it's a completely different subject and I don't want to 
I don't want to force people that are members of shitty, or well, not members, but, you know, subs to shitty kitty to suddenly have a channel on a topic that may not interest them. I think that's kind of cheeky. Jazz for Justice used to do that. She'd have a channel, a smaller channel, and then she'd change it into something else, and I kind of felt like it was cheeky. Sounded like a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> the the rusty spring because i'm left-handed i keep trying to turn things around so that i'm not blocking the camera all the time but the camera is so much better on this side than the other um unless i want like stove top action then i put the camera on the other side but um look it's real-time cooking i mean this is the reality of making a mess in the kitchen, grating up zucchini. You don't need to, you know, a lot of recipes say to put the zucchini in a clean tea towel and squeeze out the water. You don't have to do that with this recipe. Just grate it and chuck it in. It adds to the moisture. And we all know the number one rule with muffins. What do you want them to be? All together now. Moist. Did you say moist, Sunny? That's rude. So maybe that's why Donna says, and this is another Donna Hay recipe. I like doing her recipes on this channel because, or on my cooking channels, because when I'm cooking or on my cooking channel, because I want to do affordable, seasonal food and also guaranteed good and the one thing I've learned over the years with Donna Hay, I've never made a Donna Hay dish I haven't liked. And for the most part, I love them. She keeps things simple. She doesn't use hundreds of ingredients. She doesn't use ingredients that are difficult to source or insanely expensive to buy. Doodle Brown, you inspired me, gorgeous. I mean, I had weirdly, I had been thinking about it because I've started watching the new season of MasterChef and I was like, I really miss cooking on YouTube. And then when you said it the other day, I was like, yeah, I've got to do it. So thank you. Thank you so much. We've already made, I'm doing individual lives for each dish. This is my usual Sunday afternoon too. I just love cooking and putting on music usually, but... um. No music for the YouTubes. I'd rather chat to you guys. Um, plus Mother's Day sucks when you don't have a mum and you're not a mum, so hanging out with you groovers is a much better thing to do than mope and feel sorry for myself. I mean, I am a mother to Sunny, but she uh, didn't get me anything, so, you know. She's just casually, like, hanging out at the end of the kitchen in the hallway door with me. You're cute, Sunny. She wants me to chase her. I was like, uh, I'm life on YouTube, kiddo. you got to just entertain yourself. That's what only children have to do. Hey, Miss Kay. We do find ways to inspire each other, Doodle. It's great. And um, I was going to say, We've already made a baked custard that's in the oven. We'll just do a check. About 12 minutes. In fact, I'll just have a quick look. I don't know what they're doing. But we'll be taking um, those out shortly. Now we're doing the um, beautiful zucchini ricotta and tomato muffins. And Humana Lamula and I have been talking about how much we love muffins for like they're great for your work lunches they're good for brunch or even just like a snack I mean I tend to make more savory than sweet ones and especially because I'm making a baked custard like I only make one sweet thing every Sunday and it might be sometimes it's sweet muffins like a blueberry muffin sometimes it's um I've actually want to make some baked donuts. I finally found a dish, like a baking dish for baked donuts. So I'm going to make them soon. I've even bought a bottle of lemonade for them. Um, I often make protein balls and they're sort of my sweet thing as well. 
And, um, yeah, but I usually lean more towards the savoury ones. So that's what we're doing. Um, so we've added our zucchini. Next we're going to add some cherry tomatoes. Look at these gorgeous fine ripened ones. I am using full cream ricotta. You bet I am. I don't use light anything. And, you know, my physique probably reflects that, but no, I don't skimp. So we just get our cherry tomatoes. So like a punnet of cherry tomatoes. These vine ripened ones are usually the most expensive and they were the cheapest and I was so excited because they're my favourite. Who doesn't love a trust cherry tomato, right? I mean, look, yum. Gorgeous. Everyday use the light ricotta. Oh, look, it probably is more than decent. To be honest, I don't even know if I've tried it. I mean, if there was no ricotta, full cream, I'd buy the light. But things like light sour cream, forget it. So, yeah, about 250 grams is a punnet or one of these little, whoops, things. But we have them. We want to make sure that there's at least one. These are quite big. I probably could have got away with quartering these, but I'm not going to. But I'm going to make sure that there's at least one cherry tomato per muffin because you need them. They're the flavour pop. <laughs> so there is our cherry tomatoes and these little stalks go in my compost that goes off my deck when I'm not filming. And this goes in the recycling. And it just fell out of the recycling tub onto the floor. That is fine. Coming up next, we need um, half a cup of milk. Again, I'm all about the lactose free, so it's humanimal, but you could use your full cream. It's just so weird. I got in the habit of drinking lactose free, and as much as we get amazing milks down here, we've got Beautiful dairies, very close to where I am. Big fat Tasmanian cows. Um, but I'm now totally into the uh, the lactose free. So we've got our milk. Then we're going to add half a cup of olive oil. Extra virginal, if you want. Oh, yeah, baby. This is going to be so good. I can already tell. I mean, look, every muffin. I've never made these. Everything I make on these um, channels, not everything, 99% of the things that I make, I'm making for the first time because that's part of the idea with this channel too is for people to realise that, you know, I mean, I cook all the time, but I want people to think that, wow, that wasn't that hard. I might give it a crack too. Speaking of cracking, we need to add two eggs. And Humanimal suggested... running them under some water before cracking them. So I've just done that. I don't know if that was more about when you're separating them, but whack in a couple of eggs. Now there's still a few more ingredients to go, but I'm just going to, whenever I add eggs, I like to mix. That's my cue to mix what's in the bowl so far together because we're looking the next few ingredients are more going to be I think like some cheese and some seasoning so 
you can chuck it all in the bowl and then do one big mix at the end if you like. I just, for some reason, when I add eggs, that's my cue to mix. <laughs> fold in the cheese later. But what does fold in the cheese mean? Just fold it in. Oh, it's to wash bacteria. Oh, okay, because I wash my eggs before I put them away when I've bought them because I get them from a nearby farm. And I know that Katie would definitely wash them, but it's more of a peace of mind thing is that I know I've washed them too. <laughs> it's like whenever I've moved into a new place um, to live, even if it's been professionally cleaned and you can tell when it has, I still clean it myself as well because I want to know that whatever germ is left in the house is my germ, not their germ. Mind you, I built this house so I didn't. The texture of the batter looks fab. It does. It's got a very squishy, moist, whorehouse sound happening though when I mix it. Hear that? I'm so glad I used my normal muffin bowl. It needs to be big, wide, and your mum's or grandmother's. They just don't taste the same. Next, we're going to add the ricotta. Are you right there, Sunny? She's, she's totally got the zoomies. We're adding half a cup of ricotta. Four and a half minutes till I check the custards. So, yeah, definitely using the full cream ricotta. I love ricotta. I'm so glad there's some left over because ricotta pancakes, oh, my God, they are so good. Ricotta and blueberry. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I've got a keto recipe with ricotta and blueberry pancakes. It's so easy and they're amazing. Might be watching me make them on Thursday, Groovers, because that's when I'll be live next cooking, I reckon. Don't waste to drop peeps. Ricotta just gives this incredible light, fluffy softness. That's a $50 extra special right there. I know it wasn't cheap. Nothing is cheap. The cheese section breaks my heart at the moment. My God. Everything is so expensive. But especially cheeses. And I love my cheeses. So a bit of ricotta. Now interestingly speaking of cheeses, um this recipe said to put um a cup of grated provolone, which I have never cooked with. I'm just a Parmesan girl through and through, or as the Americans would say, Parmesan. And um, weirdly, the cheapest um, Parmesan, and there wasn't a lot to choose from that I could get, is this shaved, already shaved, even better. Just some shaved parmy straight in. We want a cup of that. So, you know, people can experiment and put what they like. Like if you like um, mozzarella, use that maybe. I don't know. Use whatever makes you happy, whatever you can afford. Grated cheddar would be fine. But I there's something about parmy. Um, I mean, I make a lot of muffins that have feta. But we're just going for the cup of palmy, thank you very much. It was so expensive. I nearly thought about getting the, you know, the parmesan cheese in a tub that lives in your pantry. Oh, the noises. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so overly priced. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, Sunny's got the zoomies. Are you right there? She's so upset with me because guess what my role is in this house? 
when I'm not feeding her or cleaning up after her, chasing her is the other role I have in this house. And other than that, she really wouldn't give a shit about whether I was here or not. So I just got the look of doom. Yes, the, we want that bite. Exactly. But if you notice, yeah, Americans say Parmesan. Then we're going to add some salt and pepper. I always use beautiful Tasman sea salt. I don't use the... I'm like, guys, season your food. So many people say to me, why is your food so yummy? It's like, because I season it. Like, honestly, that's all I do. It's different to people. Put a good amount of salt. I mean, don't go to the point that it's so salty you can't eat it. But, I mean, this is a big bowl of dough, right? You want to make sure that it's got good flavour and lots of pepper too. And then at the end, she suggests you serve cracked pepper on top of them. Yum, as if you wouldn't. And that's it, guys. They're the ingredients. I'm just going to get that beautiful ricotta. <laughs> that's my phone. Check out the song for the timer. <laughs> We're so similar, human animal in the kitchen. Yeah, you take it right up to the line. Be confident, people. See, people put like two grains of salt and you're like, that's not going to do anything. Well, then you go to those houses. You know those houses, the friends of yours that don't have salt and pepper on the table or anywhere and you're like... I know that you're about to serve me under-seasoned bland food and I really want to ask for salt and pepper. And then you're like, do you have any salt or pepper? And they're like, no, we don't. I swear to God, if I ate my way through my pantry and the way cost of groceries are, that's what we're all kind of doing now. So like having that leftover ricotta, it's like, yep, I'll be making ricotta pancakes later in the week for sure. But the last thing that would be left in my pantry would be salt and pepper because I have a stash because I never want to run out of the stuff, ever. <laughs> All right, Ski, there's our beautiful dough for our muffins. We interrupt this live. Oh, yeah, no butter. I know. They have, um, oh, God, what's that horrible stuff called that pretends to be butter? Nutalex. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to check. We do interrupt this live to check the state of our baked custards, everybody. Yep, perfect. Oh, we... <laughs> timer's everywhere. So now I'm going to crank the oven up to 180 because that's the temperature we need for the muffins and also the mustardy cauliflower cheese coming up. Now, guys, this smells... Unbelievable. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick it up or not, but I'm shaking them a bit. Can you see the middle bits are still a tiny bit wobbly? That's what you want. You want them to be a tiny bit wobbly because they're going to keep cooking. But what you've got to do is take them out of the bath. What do you reckon, human animal? Do you think they look good? Here, let's get one little groover. Or do you reckon they need a few more minutes? Is that a bit too much wobbling? What would you say? Yeah, we are. Mustardy cauliflower cheese. They look perfect. I thought so too. And they will keep cooking. It's like 15 minutes they keep cooking for. So I'm just taking them out and letting them continue to cook on the board. I mean, normally I'd have them sitting on the bench, but this place is chaotic right about now. Sunny's having a drink of water. She's made herself thirsty. Good girl. Good girl, Sunny. We'll be tasting them in 15 minutes. Don't you worry about that. But yeah, I'm making Yotta Motolenghi's mustardy cauliflower cheese next because I've got some gorgeous lamb cutlets from my amazing butcher and um, I've also got a bunch of 
gorgeous little baby um, heirloom carrots that I'm going to do as well. Uh, I can't turn the heat off because um, I've actually just cranked the oven up to 180 for the muffins. Look, I love my custards. They're definitely going to be cooked enough for um, me. But if not, I can chuck them in a bit later if they need a few more minutes. I'm going to have to heat them up before I eat them anyway. So let's do the muffins. I order most of my meals delivered, but even I would have salt and pepper. Exactly. It's good stuff. And salt is so important for our brain health. You know, all these anti-salt people. It's actually really bad advice, especially like our family. We don't um, retain sodium from our food. Like my dad used to eat so much salt and he put like a pile of it on the side of his plate. But my brother, sister and I, we all put salt on everything that we eat because our bodies, we don't retain sodium very well. And when dad got really sick one time, he was at, um, in a hospital and he was acting a little bit cray-cray. And the doctor said to me, do you guys all crave salt? And I said, yep. And he said, yeah, some people just don't retain sodium as well as others. And the reason Dad got a bit weird was his sodium level got so low because even the saline drips in the hospital are PC now about how much salt was in them. And there's some kind of scale. And Dad was like half a point away from potentially being rendered permanently insane because his sodium levels were so low so yeah if you crave salt shove that stuff in your face with pride look after your health so i'm just while i'm divvying up all the mixture the dough i'm just making sure that i'm getting half a cherry tomato at least hopefully there'll be enough for two in each one I think the custards are going to be fabulous too. There is a cherry tomato in that blob. Yeah, salt's so essential. Yeah, it was like currency. Plus, we have amazing sea salt down here, like the Tasman brand. Seriously, if you ever see this anywhere... That's the same as the salt that's in my salt pig. And I don't know why, but last the last couple of seasons of MasterChef, this was the sea salt they used. It's unbelievable. It's so good. So if you see it, grab it. They also do um, different types of salts with different seasonings. So, like, there's a Japanese-flavoured one. Um, and they also make lavosh, and it's the best lavosh in the world because it's got this incredible salt on it. Yummy. Here's one of their little ones that has flavouring in it. This is the, the pepperberry one. Great stuff. See why I'm on Tasmania calling? I'm highlighting all of our yummy stuff. we got good stuff here. I mean, the whole planet's got good stuff. But why not show you off the stuff where you live too, right? Okay, did that one get a cherry tomato? I don't know. You might end up with three. This um, muffin dough consistency is superb. You know when you're making things, you can tell they're going to be amazing because of the, like it's not runny, it's all sort of holding together, it looks really smooth. It smells yumbelina. I noticed the Yotamotolengi um, cauliflower cheese coming up next. Uh, he wanted parsley and I refuse to pay five or six bucks for a bunch of parsley, especially when I grow it myself. But the possums keep taking all the leaves off it. They love it. And um, I popped out before while I finished cleaning the kitchen up just to see what I could substitute. And I've got lots of oregano, so I'm going to, even though it looks like it's going to seed a little bit, it does need a bit of a trim, but I'm going to 
use my homegrown oregano. So, yeah, I think every cupcake, or every cupcake, every muffin's going to get at least two cherry tomatoes in it. So, again, we'll start off, just put, like, the same amount in each cup, work your way around, and then you go around for round two and you top them all up. And you don't have to, like, flatten them and make them all even and level and stuff. They do that when they're cooking, as you would know, Hume Animal. But honest, I wish more people made muffins, especially when they've got kids that are a bit fussy with things like, you know, specific veggies and stuff, because I think muffins just make... It's just a really good way to, to prepare veggies, I think, for kids, a muffin, especially if you hide the veggies, like grating the zucchini, for example, rather than putting a big pile of boiled zucchini on their plate at dinner, put grated zucchini. I mean, I make sweet cakes that have grated zucchini in it because zucchini is so good at making things moist and um, kids wouldn't even know. All right. Who needs a cherry tomato? You do. Let's put the last bits of the mixture on. Yum. This is going to be great. I'm just going to get a spatula to get the last of the mix and then we can have a bit of a chat once I want whack these babies on because we've got to hang out for a little while and see what the, the custards taste like. This is why I like cleaning up between. Mind you, when I cook, when I meal prep on my own, if I'm not live on YouTube, I probably have like three dishes all happening at the same time. I just decided to be a bit different and do each one individually on YouTube. But yeah, usually there'd probably be, there'd definitely be a soup on the go at the moment for sure. And I think I will have time to show you the soup because the soup. I prefer one-day-old soup. I want to have it for dinner tomorrow night. Um, if I don't do it today, I'll just make it after work because at least working from home, I'll be at home. I'll finish work at 5 and I can start cooking, whereas if I work in town, I don't get home till just after 6. But the soup is really easy and you just chuck the, um, the noodles in when you're heating it up. Yeah, the batter's amazing. I used a cookbook called The Sneaky Chef when my son was younger to sneak in all the veggies. Good work. And then for some reason, I don't know why, um, I always do the, I think I learned that from Nigella. It doesn't level them out ridiculously, but I can't remember if it was Jamie Oliver or Nigella. But anyway, there we have them. They're heavy too. The batter is perfect. And... We're going to um, cook these for 35 to 40 minutes or when they come clean, like the skewer test. And these just get um, chilled on a, they get to cool down on a wire rack. But when you serve them, sprinkle some more cracked pepper on top. Delicious. So they're going in. Look out, sunny bum. And now that I know my oven timer is working, we're going to put 35 minutes on the clock. Do you reckon it's been 15 minutes for the custards? <laughs> what do you reckon? Because once I've done the taste test for the custard, I'll end this live. I'm liking these sort of 30 to 40-minute cooking shows. I'm happy with this. But, yeah, I can try the custard and then I can end the live, do the dishes again and reset and kick off with the cauliflower cheese. This is a great way to do this. Look, I don't mind if the custard's a bit hot. I'm going to dip in. It's still got that yummy wobbly. You want it to be wobbly. You don't want your custard to not be wobbly because then it means it's like a block of rubber, right? Let me wash my hands. I'm 
we're going to swap out all my tea towels. We need fresh tea towels. I love the idea of the sneaky chef. Well, that's the thing. I like when I like um when I make stuff on this channel. I do like tips for people that have to work out how to sneak veggies into their kids. Like on the opposite page of this muffins, and I thought we'll do these one day too because yum. Um, these are tomato relish ham and cheddar muffins, but they've got spinach snuck into them. <laughs> Genius. I mean, the kids will see that, but it looks more like parsley or something. Anyway, I'm going to try. This This dish is actually still very hot, so it will keep cooking them. So this might be a bit premature. It's more for the taste test. And, yeah, I'm having. I'm going to have one of these after dinner tonight. If I need it, I may not because I'm going to be having lamb, cauliflower cheese and baby heirloom carrots. Tomato relish, ham and cheddar is talking your language. All right. We'll be making them next weekend. You need to make sure you've got some shredded ham, some baby spinach. I grow my own chives. You do need to grab some grated, some cheddar, milk and a couple of eggs, and we'll make them next week. Beautiful caramelization on the <laughs> why thank you. I mean the oven did it all by itself. But this um ramekin is still look at the color of it. Can you guys tell that it's like a really gorgeous teal green? It's like a bluey, greeny, dark, very dark. I mean teal's not the right word, but I call it it was called teal. But it's gorgeous. Gorgeous color. Like my olive oil bottle is the same stuff. I love it. All right. I'm going to dip in. But, yeah, this ramekin's still pretty hot, so they are going to keep cooking for a while. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. You're right. It is beautifully caramelised. It's pretty. Actually, it probably could have done with another minute. One minute, but it's cooked, and I love custard, and it's just me eating them. So it's still got a good wobbly... I'd rather it be like this than overcooked. It's still really hot. Mmm. Ah. Oh. Why have I never made these before? So in my kitchen, I own... I love journals and notebooks and stuff. And I love the Moleskin brand of journals. And if you can see the lighting's so tricky in here, but this is the Moleskin recipe book. And because it's black, it's called the Black Book. And whenever I make something that is amazing, I put it in the black book. So whenever I cook a dish and it's like, that was incredible, it's like, that was a black book dish. This, oh, my God. You could put, Moskin's your favourite. See, like attracts like on YouTube. I love that. I love that we all just like, yeah, but, yeah, I love Moskin too. Um, This, I swear to God, I know with baked custard, you know, you can put some fresh strawberries, blueberries. You could serve a custard with, um, you know, like a, a stewed fruit, for example. Because of the star anise and the cinnamon, this doesn't need anything else. It's kick-ass, black book, amazing. Whoops. Mmm. And it's boiling hot. This is so going into the straight to the pool room, Dal. <laughs> this is totally going in the black book for sure. So yeah, it's a tiny. I think the other ones are going to keep cooking, but that is to die for. 
Yeah, exactly. True. I'm making a custard, not true, not a baked cheesecake. It is perfect too, and it's piping hot, but I can't stop eating it. Mmm. <laughs> I swear to God, if someone served me that in a restaurant, I'd be like, wow. That That's how it, it's wow. And it doesn't need a thing with it. It's sweet. It's spicy. This would be so yummy after a curry because it's still got some spice going on, but it's creamy and sweet. Oh, it is divine. Yep. Black book, baby. Let's see if the muffins are. Um, I'm going to end this live because the muffins still have... Just under 30 minutes to go. Yeah, it is absolutely and definitely serve it. I mean, I eat cold custard. I'm going to love it cold too. But out of the oven like that. Oh, my God. And as you guys know, with a custard, you can make it, put it in the fridge, and then when dinner's served, crank up the oven or turn it down or whatever and whack your custards on and maybe halfway through dinner cooking and then have beautiful, that's so yummy and so wintry too. It's got those yummy cinnamon star anise undertones. It's divine. I'm salivating. I want to eat the whole thing, but it's so hot. <laughs> so on that note, and, yeah, those ramekins hold the heat very well, I'm just going to quickly end this live, do a quick reset and come back to make Yotam Ottolenghi's mustardy cauliflower cheese. So... I really appreciate you groovers hanging out with me. If you feel like um, coming back, please do. Your oven probably still has heat from cooking. Take the fridge chill off in the cooling oven. Huh? <laughs> Oh, look, I'm going to move these over here while I clean the kitchen. This, the, top, the top of the oven's not that hot. It's the ramekins are amazing. So, yeah, we'll be back soon to do the creamy cauli oh, the mustardy cauliflower cheese, Yota Motolenghi, another rock star chef in my view. And if you want to also see how the muffins turn out, definitely pop back in. Oh, I gotcha at the dinner part. Yes. Yes. Oh, Sweet Dreams, Doodle Brown, and, um, yeah, these will be up on both. They're on Tasmania Calling and on the Shitty Kitty Kitchen channel. And I'll be back in about 20 minutes to do the next thing. This is my Sunday afternoon meal prep and cook. So thank you for popping in, Doodle, Sweet Dreams, and definitely try these baked custards if you're into custard. They were so easy and they are restaurant-quality delish. I'll see you all again in a few minutes, Groovers. Love you guts. Bon appetit. <laughs>